What's going on, socialites? Welcome back to another GPS Tracking, your podcast for everything you need to know about the Global Pokemon Society and all things Pokemon news in general. So before we hop into this week's Pokemon news, not a lot really going on, but a couple of things for, uh, you know, fans of anime and all that. Uh, we will be joined by Cole, head coach of Driftvale City Dragon Bolts, to go over his games the first couple weeks and also talk about free agency and trade transactions in the league this season. If you're familiar with how we've done past seasons, pretty similar. You know, we do tweak it a little bit each season, um, so there are some minor tweaks that we'll go over for everyone who's interested in that. But with that said, let's take a look at some of the Pokemon news right now. So, again, I was saying most of this is going to be for anime fans. For those fans of the core anime, the next season of Pokemon Journeys is now on Netflix. So definitely check it out. Um, I know that there's been some like mixed bag about the anime this season or this cycle, whatever you want to call it. But I think it's kind of cool. I think um, Ash has a pretty cool team. Um, I like all of his Pokemon. They all have a distinct personality. Dragonite, Gengar, Riolu, and Lucario. Um, Dracovish I haven't seen too much. I'll have to watch more on that. But he, he got a good team this season. He doesn't have like any, you know, lame Pokemon. Although last season, he didn't really have any lame Pokemon either in Sun and Moon. And he was the champion. And I think it's also interesting the um, kind of battle tournament he's in, right? It seems like something that could be incorporated into like an MMO style kind of game. You know, something like real life. You're not just restricted to one region. It is a global tournament. So that's pretty cool. And as far as Go, I mean, he is what he is. But yeah. Next, the um, actually the day that the last podcast came out we actually had the first episode of evolutions premiere and it was really cool to see this highly stylized anime um i loved how they portrayed leon here and i guess we can say that in the you know lore the canon that your main character picks sobble as their starter you saw the main character had an inteleon which would mean that Go would have a Cinderace and Leon would take the Grookey, therefore the Rillaboom at the end. But yeah, it was really cool to see and uh, Leon was definitely shook. He, uh, from his encounter with the Eternatus, you, um, the main character, capturing it, Victor, I believe is the uh, in-game name of the main character, Victor and Victoria. So yeah, and he had to fight you for the championship series, and he was definitely going through some PTSD. So maybe that's why you to defeat the undefeatable champion. You know, his mind was all in. But super awesome. If you haven't checked out Evolutions, definitely do. No episode this week. The next one will be out next week. So definitely check that out. And last but not least, not really news, but just an article that I saw that they posted. Uh, going to some TCG news um, coming out in the future expansions is going to be this new it's not really a new card type but it's a new mechanic v union and this looks nutty right so it's almost like if you play Yu-Gi-Oh, you get exodia if you have all five pieces in your was it hand graveyard and play i don't even remember that probably would have been too broken you probably need them in play and your hand but this is if you have all four of these pieces in your graveyard in your discard pile you get to put them into play as a Pokemon. Now, my only caveat with this is if I open a pack, it's going to have all four of these in one pack. Like, does it take up, let's say, like, it probably wouldn't be able to, right? Because you'd be able to weigh them out. You're probably going to have to find all four of these in separate packs, which just seems like, to me, a collector's nightmare, especially when it's so difficult to still get stuff. Like... This could easily be well over a hundred dollars just to get one of these cards Because you need to get four separate cards for it. I don't know if anyone knows definitely let me know down in The comments below how that's gonna work as far as like pack distribution 
All right, with that said, that's all we had for like general Pokemon news. So we're gonna hop into the Draft League stuff right now. All right, welcome Draft League fans. So week two in the books and really a lot of great battles. Definitely check them out. Check out the season six playlist. If you haven't already, make sure you're caught up on all that because there, there were some real good battles here. Uh, week one, we had a lot of blowouts. Um, I think people made some, you know, adjustments as well. So let's take a look at the current standings. We do see Denver maintains their first place in the standings. Pittsburgh shoots up to tie them, though, for first place. We see them moving up six points or rankings in the standings. Both of them 2-0 and with 10 differentials. Black City and Boston both remain in third place with a nine differential. Memphis and El Paso both move up four points. Memphis with eight differentials, so right behind the rest of the group there. And El Paso, the last two and O team, but zero differential points um, still. So they've had some close battles, but they've been able to win when they needed to. Moving down to our one and one teams, we see Paris and Germanion, Vero, to and Tokyo, all one and one, but with positive differentials. So that's good for them. Paris dropping six spots in the rankings after getting a clean sweep in week one. They do have a tough fought game against Black City, but end up losing that one. Charm City and Waco battled each other, and they basically just canceled each other out from week one. So they're both one and one with an even differential, zero differential points. The Badoofs get to one and one, as well as the Dragapults and the Mighty Psyducks, both trying to get into the positive with their differential points, but at least you pick up a win early in the season. Now down to our remaining winless teams. We have the biggest drop was Lavender Town. Now they were still up pretty high because they were 0-1 with one game one, The only 0-1 team that actually won a game last, see last week. And they had an even differential. So they lose not... Well, I guess pretty big to the Pittsburgh Poltegeist, which sees them drop way down there. Oklahoma and... Diamond Desert Dwellers and Slateport, they all get a game win this week. So that at least gives them some points there. And then we see Daytona and Seattle. Huge difference in differentials here. Remember in week one, these were the two teams that got swept. So they both start at minus eight. So they did better this week, but still not able to get a game win. So with that, let's take a look at our top performing Pokemon now. Our top ten following the results of week two so here we have our top 10 performing pokemon following week two starting at the top very interesting to see metagross staying there at the top that's mostly off of its week one performance gain six ko's only picking up one ko this week but still enough to stay up there raikou with a huge game week two able to shoot up there to seven ko's putting it in a tie for the league lead right now that definitely helps el paso has played six games compared to a lot of these teams only playing four maybe five games pittsburgh pulte guys they got lele and calyrex both with six ko's psg suicune with six ko's waco zapdos denver alolan nine tails six ko's vero beach with porygon or excuse me with mewtwo and oklahoma with porygon z denver's arc Dissolt rounds out Five KOs, only one faint. Um, also, Melmetal on Denver has five KOs. Hatterene from the Boston Braviaries has five KOs. And I believe there's one other Pokemon I'm totally blanking on that has five KOs. Or it might have been the Lele, but we updated that. So I think that's all the Pokemon with five KOs. I might be missing one. But yeah, that's the top ten best performing Pokemon after week two. So let's talk about some teams real quick. 
All right, socialize. So we're just gonna go through the winless teams right now. So these are the O2 teams. You don't listen. It's ten weeks this season, so I'm not saying like, oh, you could go zero and three, you could go and four. I think five and five, six and four can be fine. But come on, you you know you want want to get a win sooner rather than later. So we're just gonna take a look at these and kind of decipher what they're kind of doing and what they could improve upon. So we're going alphabetical order. So we're going to start with Daytona, 0-2, um, gained swept the first week. You know, did better the second week, but that sweep is hard to uh, overcome. So first things first, their X tier Rayquaza. They they haven't even brought to a match, never mind a game. So I'm I'm questioning what that is about. Just seems like a lot of offensive potential left on the side there. They do like to bring Colossal. They they need support for Colossal. I think they know that. Po Politoed was kind of a uh, mistake there. You're, you're not a rain team. You don't need a rain supporter. Bringing Toxapex to a lot of game. Now, Toxapex is interesting. Um, it can definitely 1v1 some stuff. But it's super situational. So, I'm not sure that bring it to all four games now it does have two ko's like again it not like you're using it as a bulky support it shouldn't really be the one picking up the ko's um you kind of want to use it to really hinder these x tiers and these dynamaxes that maybe don't have super effective damage into it and be able to kind of stall that out I would really like to see some Trick Room support here um, to help Marowak really do some stuff. I think Marowak, um, of course you put the Thick Club on Marowak, doubling its attack power. If you, that can be a Dynamax option, Colossus can be a Dynamax option. You have a lot of ground and water weaknesses here. So Serena is still good. But I... There, there just needs to be some more support here. And bring Rayquaza just so that you have that offensive threat. Next, we have the Diamond Desert Dwellers. So again, they did a lot better in the second game going up against the Mighty Psyducks. But let's take a look here. Um, obviously, they got a Sun theme going on with Charizard Groudon. They are bringing that to every game, so they do understand that's where their offensive output's gonna be. Uh, Shift Tree. I haven't actually gone to see them really utilize Shiftry correctly. Um, fake out support on Shiftry, Solar Blade, Sucker Punch. Those are kind of the moves that, that you're going to want on Shiftry in these sorts of games. Um, as the only Sun team really going on, I know that El Paso does have Torkoal, but they're not really leaning in on like, like you got Healer List, you got Shiftry here. Um, look into something like Cheerum in C tier is pretty good with Groudon. Lilligant is also good. You got a lot of grass types, like get rid of some of these. Like why, why do you have four grass types? You don't need those. Um, I don't hate Milotic, but you could probably do something better in the A tier. Look for some other support Pokemon maybe. Uh, Scrafty's really good. Intimidate, Fake Out. Like you have several Fake Out users you know, use that to uh, let yourself kind of get set up here and do some big damage. All right, next we got probably the biggest surprise in the O2 bracket, the Lavender Town Gengars. We had this team ranked very highly, and for them to start 0-2, a um, little nutty. So, looking at their team, I think one of their biggest weaknesses is they just don't have a good Dynamax Pokemon. Like, Gyarados is fine, but it's gonna get hit by you know, Electric types. You also have Sceptile, who can be okay, but you don't have any terrain support or um, priority to proc, like, an Unburden. Like, if you have, like, a weakness policy and just something that could do, like, a weak Ice Shard into it, that'd be pretty good because then you could get Weakness Policy on Burden as a Dynamax. So I think that's kind of like their only weakness there. Like, there's a reason why Aegislash is in the C tier. It's really not that good in doubles. They do have double Intimidate, um, but again, uh, Rock weaknesses. 
seem to be a thing here on this core. And Re Reggio Lecky is both good offensively and, um, you know, as a support Pokemon as well. But you saw in their game one how Lantern just shut off Reggio Lecky. So you, if you're going to bring it as an offensive threat, you definitely want to make sure you have, like, either Swift or Hyper Beam. You could even go physical if you wanted to go with extreme speed. But I don't think that's necessary. All right, the next 0 and 2 team we have are the Oklahoma Thunderous. Now, Trevor and I we talked quite a bit, I think, about um, some stuff, and he's definitely making some changes to his team. But again, the biggest thing I see from his team that I kind of went over in his match against Denver that I recorded was that his only real threatening Dynamax option is Porygon Z. Which is okay, but when you kind of see it coming, you know, you can plan around it. So, that that would be all I would do. Like, I like Clefairy and Tapu Fini as kind of like support Pokemon. Like, you can even call mine Tapu Fini um, in, in the right matchup and have that be your Dynamax Pokemon. You do want to hit like a couple of Calm Mines. Talonflame with Gale Wing's uh, Tailwind is good. I don't really know about Faramosa. Um, I would have to see more use of it. Obviously, it is a fast and threatening, um, you know, Pokemon. But in the world of priority and focus sashes and fake out and everything, I just don't really know its utility. Um, we do see it trying to speed swap with stuff. It just seems like it hasn't worked out in some matchups for him. Seattle shiny Sylveons. Oh, Ian. Okay, what what do we got here? For one, I would Dynamax your Pokemon. I don't think he's clicked Dynamax yet. I could be wrong. Uh, but I don't think that has happened. Um, I think Dynamax Tyranitar with weakness policy. And then you have like a physical Dragapult. Like support. Um, to just kind of you know, click surf on that first turn and then set up screens after that, I think would be real nice. I think that would be a very good combo, as long as you're not facing down, like, something strong with fighting type. But you could even check for that by, um, you know, going for, like, an ally switch or something with Dragapult the first turn. A lot of fighting weaknesses, though. You see one, two, three, four... Five, I believe fighting weaknesses so he does really have to worry about the fighting types I think that's where Latios kind of comes in but yeah maybe kind of switch some of those out definitely would want some more support Pokemon there are some Pokemon still with good redirection tools um, I like Tangrowth in the B tier it can get Sleep Powder it can get Rage Powder you know doesn't really have a Grass type so that can definitely help as well. And our final low and two team that I just want to kind of go over is Slateport Sableyes. So they did a lot better in their second game going up there. Again, they, they kind of have a similar thing as Oklahoma where they, they really don't have a good Dynamax option. Um, Sableye is a good support Pokemon, but you got to really kind of master how to use it. Uh, we've seen that with prior teams who had Sableye, is they just don't really utilize it as effectively. So, I don't mind the Pelipper with the Ferrothorn sort of thing, but I would want some more... Like, if you're going to have Pelipper, I know that Politoed isn't really available, but if you're going to have Pelipper, if you're going to have this Rain Setter, get something to abuse it, you know. Unfortunately, what, Ludicolo, Kingdra, Barrascuda, those are all taken... Bear ticks taken. Yeah, so it is kind of tough, but that's what I would be looking at. Something like that. I would definitely be getting rid of like Wobbuffet, Swoobat, Deli Bird. I wouldn't want those. Togedemaru with Lightning Rod is good. Again, I think that like Pelipper, Togedemaru, just get like a Rain Threat and Ferrothorn. Like, that's not bad. That's honestly like not a bad core. You get Sableye to 
kind of do some support stuff there. You got Galarian Darmantan, who we saw this week just blow through a team all by itself with Rock Slide. Like, that can happen with Darmantan, but when it doesn't, that's when it's bad. All right, so let's get into the interview with Cole, going over free agency. And then after that, I'm going to kind of talk about a few teams and what Pokemon I would be looking to add to them. Hello, Socialites. I'm joined now with Cole, head coach of Driftvale City Dragapults. How's it going, Cole? Good, Ryan. Great, actually. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. So, um, week two of the season, just wrapping up. So, week one, I mean, can I say that that was kind of an upset? Um, I mean, Zach always has Zach's like, like a bad coach, but um, no. He's got I, I some think based on our preseason rankings and stuff, at least. Yeah, um, I will say I didn't see you ranking me that high because I wouldn't have ranked me that high. But yeah, so Zach's team did kind of worry me a little bit, so I wasn't surprised when I lost in two straight games. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it was a sweep. We had a lot of sweeps last week, um, a lot of 2-0s. But... Uh, but you did get some revenge this week, so why don't you kind of walk us through your match against the Vera Beach Volcaronas. Um, this was definitely another nail biter though. Ed, another seasoned coach, he's been with us since season three. So walk us through that from your perspective. Okay, well, yeah, so um, I think this is only like the second time I faced Ed. The first time was back in season four. I can't remember if I faced him in season three. Because that was before I actually started recording. And I don't feel like jumping that far back on the uh, Society's yeah. YouTube page. But, um, yeah. So, as far as I remember, like I said, this is the second time we faced each other. Um, last time, he ended up beating me with Silv Ally. So, I wanted to at least win one of the games with my Silv Ally. Since I got it and he didn't. And luckily, that was game one. It came down to literally... Just Sylvalli and his Alolan Raichu. Uh, Raichu Dynamaxed, but couldn't knock it out with a Max Lightning. And then I ended it with a Ghost type multi attack. Mm -hmm. And then, so game two, um, I will say his Cinderace was very, very specially defensive because I hit it with a Max Rockfall up in game one from Heatran. And even though that wasn't you know stab it still did like barely anything but um yeah so game two um i went with the same four he switched it up a little bit he ended up winning with mewtwo it came down to qrem and drake result versus mewtwo but mewtwo was faster than both of them and drake result had was in yellow health qrem was still kind of high but Mewtwo's ancient powers did enough, and then Mewtwo was enough, had enough to KO uh, Dragazolt with Ice Beam. So then we went into game three, and I decided to do, for the first time this season, not that it's saying much, a little bit of uh, redirect shenanigans with Amoongus. So go. I could make sure that Heatran would actually survive and not die turn one. And it worked out because Mewtwo killed Amoongus with Ice Beam, but Heatran actually got all three of its Dynamax turns off. Wow. It actually survived for a while. And now that I'm saying that, I just realized I did miss typing up a KO, and that was the KO of Heatran. But um, that's fine. So yeah, so it came down basic to Qrem and Drake is all... No, oh no, because I forgot, no, I'm an idiot. Heatran didn't die. Heatran was in the final two with Qrem. Uh, so he maxed his uh, Noivern, but Qrem got off a freeze dry, killing it. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So I won that last game with two remaining. So, yeah, even the final game was still kind of close. It wasn't like, you know, 3-0, yeah. 4-0. It was just 2-0. So now we're both 1-1, one one, but... I was very happy because I did not want to start off another season at 0 and 2. Yeah. Not fun. For sure. Yeah. Definitely get that first win. 
off the bat. So, right. I mean, I guess while, I mean, you kind of brought it up. So, I mean, I guess we'll talk about it, but you you don't like your team. You, you don't have high hopes for your team. Well, I wasn't sure because I don't usually run at sand teams. Have so, you ever brought the sand yet? Yeah. I mean, I haven't really brought Gigleth much, but I did do the sand with Heatran this week. Oh, okay. I mean, it didn't really work out too well, but yeah, no, because I, I did it last week too, but Zach had uh, Trick Room. Oh, yeah, that's right. You did have the Dracovish. Yep. Yeah, because I had Drake and not Drake as all last week. To the last one, which I feel like is somewhat e an even bigger threat. What? I said, um, but week one, you didn't bring Drake Zolt, which I no. think was even, an even bigger threat. I wasn't sure. At least in that Honestly, way. I didn't bring it because he had two uh, ground types. Yeah. So I didn't want to, you know, go for Bolt Beak and have him switch in like Clay Doll or whatever. So. That was the main th reason I had brought Dracovish last week. Mm, true. true, true. I figured um, when I saw Ed's Oranguru come out with the Cinderace, I had a feeling he was going to do some instruct shenanigans. Yeah. Yeah. Um... And the Cinderace was uh, Choice Banded. Oh, okay. I was going to say, Which so kinda he was his Cinderace? No, no, he didn't. Oh, okay. No, the only ones he maxed were game one, he maxed Raichu. And then games two and three, he maxed his Noivern. So with the max rock fall from Heatran that you said uh, Cinderace tank, yeah. well, it, it wasn't uh, Libero to a fighting type at that point? Because that would have had it resist. Oh, rock life. So yeah. Like, it was going yeah, that explains it. yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, it was fighting type because it had... Hit high jump kick. Yep. Okay, that makes sense now. Which is also why it's high jump kick activated uh, heat trend flame body. Oh, nice. Well, that's good at least. Yeah. And I had forgotten it was uh, liberoed into fighting type, and I'm like, wait, why did I get the burn? And then I'm like, and li literally it was like the following game. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm an idiot. That's why. Libero. Libero. Whatever. So, Either way. I, I don't know. I mean, of <laughs> course, I would change a couple things, but I feel like you have a very solid six with just, you know, your left five and then your Kiram. Yeah. Like, you know, like you said, you got a Moongus for your redirection and then you got powerful sweepers, you know. And then I like bringing Silv Ally because, you know, I can cover some types and stuff. For sure. So congrats on that first win, Cole. Thank you. Up to one and one. You know, keep plugging. It's a long season. Oh, yeah, it season. is. Ten, ten games, so. I mean, I already know one week that I'm not going to win, so. I won't I won't ask. <laughs> it's the week I face Ryan. <laughs> oh, don't say that. I lose all the time. <laughs> all right. It's not so, to me. So... As we kind of stated at the beginning of this, uh, we're wrapping up week two. So this is kind of the week two podcast for everyone watching. Week three is a big week in the society. Historically, it's always been the week that you can start doing trades. You can start picking up free agents. So I'm just going to run through the rules for that real quick. Um, just kind of like the basic stuff. So for, you know, unfortunately, I feel like sometimes people don't want to actually read the rules. So maybe I got to like tell it to them. But uh, and then Cole and I were going to take a look at the current tier list, what's still available and just kind of give our thoughts on, OK, here are some like good Pokemon, you know, and what they can kind of do. So if it's something that the teams are feeling like they might need, at least they have an idea what they can go for. <clears throat> So with that said, I'm going to just break down the rules real quick. Again, from week three through week, I think it's eight. Yeah, eight. Yeah, it's week eight this season with the 10 uh, week season. Yeah, usually so, it was uh, week seven, I think. Yeah. So first two weeks, you can't do anything. Last two weeks, you can't do anything. That That's the bookends. So you can trade any Pokemon with any other team, as long as they're the same tier, 
as many times as you want as long as both coaches agree so cole and i could literally just swap whole teams yeah we want to you know with you know if we tried to do that cole we might have to go through the rules committee and have a vote right. on that because that might just be <laughs> like okay that's a little shenanigans. that's a little too much yeah but that is something that could happen yeah. So trades are pretty, as long as they're Pokemon from the same tier, so B to B, A to A, C to C, um, those are all good. You know, DM your coaches. We have a trading block section in the Discord so you can post Pokemon that you're looking to kind of trade if you want so people can offer you trades. You know, that's the easiest and I think the more fun way to kind of build your team because you're interacting with other people, with yeah. other coaches. Um, and you can do multi-team trades, but again, you got to kind of work those out gotta and finesse it a little bit Yeah, run it by the, um, you know, rules committee with those. That might be something that we would look at a little bit more, but yeah, that's trades. If you have any questions about trades, comment on this video or DM myself or a rules committee member for this season. Now the bread and butter, the way most people make changes on their team is through free agency yep so we did the draft you have all these however many pokemon six seven hundred pokemon that were in the game and you know you do the draft the rest of the pokemon that are still left they're still available to you Here, here's how it works so this gets a little complicated so i'm gonna kind of take it slow you can do as many free agent trades in a single week as you want with one condition. You can only do in the whole season one per tier plus one free one. So you could trade an X, an A, an S, a B, and a C, and then one extra all in the same week, but then you can't do anything else the rest of the season free agent wise. You could also do just like an A and a B one week, and then the next week do another B as your free pick, but then you you can't do any more Bs, you can't do any As, you know? So some people get confused about that. If you have any questions about that, again, comment down below or message one of us. Yeah, that was me last season. The per I was I got confused about that a little bit, but you helped sort it out. So now I'm like, okay, it's the same as last season, so I'm good. Yeah. Yeah, basically the same as last season. So we're letting you trade X tiers now. Um, oh yeah, because last yeah. season you couldn't do the free yeah. agent swap, right? Right. On oh, X. The only other rule that I'm gonna have this season that's a little bit different from other seasons was kind of two. One was always in, at least for last season, but I didn't explain very well. When you send, say, again, we're going through, you want to do an A, a B, and a C, let's say this week. Send them to me in your priority. So maybe you want to do an A, a B, and a C, but you really want the B the most. Like you send really want, first. yeah. You know, you got to you gotta tell the myself or the rules committee member that you're saying these, like, hey, this is my order. The B pick, the A pick, the C pick. Because if, someone else wants the same a pick but they want it first they're gonna get it so the way priority works is it's by whatever if it's your first second third etc pick and then so we're gonna do all the first picks first in reverse order of standing so if you're the last team you get your pick of anything you know, and the higher up you are in the standings, it's less likely that you're going to get the Pokemon you want if other people want that Pokemon. But again, let's say we get down the list and now you're at like the third priority and everyone else doesn't have a third priority, then you'll get that. Even if you're like the best team. So again, that's kind of like the nuance of it. I know it can be a little confusing saying it out but it, it makes sense. Yeah, it does. The last rule, and this is what's different from previous seasons. Previous seasons, I've asked people to message me by Wednesday. I would announce everything all at once, but through the week, I would still let people make changes. This season, you gotta get in by Wednesday. By Wednesday, like Thursday midnight, 
You know what I mean? Like Wednesday night. If it's not in by Wednesday night, you can't do anything else. Because they're all going to be announced at once. So that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, think about what you want to do with your team. Send it in. If there's a conflict, like, you know, I'm 2-0, and so I'm ahead of Cole right now. Let's say I want, you know, we'll just pick a random Pokemon Blastoise and Cole also wants Blastoise. If I was myself, I'd be like, oh, you, Ryan, you can't have Blastoise because another team who has a higher priority than you asked for Blastoise. So I would let that coach know and they could pick something else that they wanted. All right. Cole, since you're my person that I'm kind of talking this to live, do you have any questions about that? Um, Not really. It does make sense. You know, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. So you can do multiple picks, but you got to send them like, this is my top, this is my second, third, blah, 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 however many you want. And it's going to go in order of what number of selection you are and then what the standings are. So that's that. And get them in by Wednesday after Wednesday. You can't do anything until the next Monday. All right. With that said, Cole, let's take a look at the tier list. All right. What's remaining? What everybody has. So I don't think we really got to go over the X, the S, and the A, unless there was something that kind of like popped out at you. Not really. Um, I will say, if you're looking for something cheeky in the S and the A, you do have a Reggie Gigas um, Weezing combo. That is always a pretty solid combo. Yeah, I'm surprised nobody grabbed them. Yeah. So that is considering this season they're in separate tiers. Yep. Yeah, I did that for a reason, people, so you could actually have some fun. And then everyone Then nobody does it. We're good. So if there's somebody who just like, man, my S and A picks, I'm not happy with them, and you want a cool combo, you know, you, you can definitely think about that. But other than that, I mean, they're S and A tiers for a reason. They're all good Pokemon. So you don't have to. What, when's this podcast coming out? Probably by tomorrow night. Okay. By by Sunday night for those um, watching. Hopefully I have it out by then. Okay. Waiting so on one more battle say currently. And then I can do my uh, team recap hopefully tomorrow. Okay. I was going to say something, but since you're, it's coming out tomorrow night, I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to say anything yet. Oh, Cole's, <laughs> Cole's strategizing who he's going to pick. Maybe, I'm not sure. Well, All right, you, we'll you can see. talk to me after we uh, stop recording. Yeah. Found some stuff off since you know I can't snipe it. Right. <laughs> All right, so here we got the B tiers. So um, we'll, we'll take a few turns here, kind of look at some stuff. I think um, one that I kind of like just there are a lot of teams that are kind of lacking a Dynamax option right now. Like I look at them and they're like, oh, they only have one Pokemon that I'm afraid if it Dynamaxes, you know? Yeah. So there are still some good Dynamax threats here. You have stuff like Durant, who with the Hustle ability um, gets that boosted attack. And as Dynamax, it's not going to miss, which is Hustle's drawback. So you get the boost without the accuracy drop. And you only have one weakness, which is Fire. So if you're looking for a good Dynamax Pokemon and your team can kind of deal with fire types a little bit. That's not a bad one. Do you have any as well that you're looking at, Cole? We'll, we'll kind of go back and forth here a little. Um, I mean, not really. I'm kind of... Cole says there's nothing good in the B tier. You hear <laughs> first. No one no, should not, be Nothing that I'm looking at right now because I'm still pretty happy with, you know, the B tiers that I picked. Yeah, no, 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 I'm not talking just for your team. I'm saying in general, like, (laughs) oh, like, this is one that I think some teams might want. Like, I'm not looking at Durant. I'm a Gen 8 team. I I can't look at Durant. No, I know. Yeah, no, you can't pick up Durant. You know, I mean, you could pick up, like, some the grocery store with your your significant other and, you know, a a nine walks by. You can't look at the nine, all right? (laughs) Uh, I wish I had a significant other. But anyway... I mean, you could pick up like Santa Scorch, or you know, hey, we got the uh, the pointy boy Pinkurchin down there. Yeah, Pinkurchin's 
I already have terrain, two different terrains. I don't need a third. And I don't need Lightning Rod on my team. Uh, Center Scorch is an option for me, but I don't know what I would want to drop yeah. for it. Just, and the only reason it's an option for me is just because fire type is very hard to come by when you're stuck in one generation. They don't right. like to give multiple fire types, typically. Um, also, it doesn't help, you know, all the common weaknesses four yeah. times to rock. It's got the water, it's got the flying. Yeah, rock, water, flying. But yeah. the rock, I mean, rock slide is pretty common, so. Yeah. White smoke is good, though. It can't be intimidated. No. Um, looking at some weather-based stuff, if you are a sand team, which, you know, Cole, you're kind of trying that out, and there's um, a couple others that I think could do sand. Stoutland. Um, get Sand Rush. It also yeah, gets I know. I actually had Stoutland um, as a possible option because the two. So like like I, I like I had a list of a lot of the stuff that I wanted. The two that I passed up on were Stoutland and uh, Midday Lichen Rock because mm -hmm. I had those both on my team. Yeah. But then I'm like, you know what? That's that's when I because I wanted to do those three. But then I'm like, wait, I need, you know, a sand setter. So I'm like, all right, let me go Gigalith. So I'll drop Stoutland. And I'm like, you know what? Let me try out Dragazolt because I don't use it that much. So I'm like, all right, let me drop Lycanroc. Yeah. I think that's still fine. I think, I mean, obviously, if you're going to go sand, you need something to set the sand, right? And then I think yeah. Dragazolt is still really good. Oh, yeah. Um, if you're a sun team, you can look at Lilligan as a sun supporter. Again, sleep powder after you, uh, chlorophyll ability, of course. So that is something that you could look at if you are a sun team. Um, it's a pretty good torquil pairing um, because of that after you and the sleep powder, being able to put stuff to sleep. Um, you know, throw a wide lens on it to help with that or focus sash, whatever you want to do. I will say torquil is helping out Tom pretty good. Yeah, it was a random pick too. Yeah, I know. Which is why when I was messaging him, I'm like, hey, why don't you kind of stick with the Sun team? Which is why he chose Ho-Oh. Um, other Pokemon that we're looking at, I mean, there's generically good ones. I mean, Crocodile can do a lot. Tauros can do a lot. You get Intimidate from both of them. You get uh, Moxie and Anger Point. Well, Anger Point and both Moxie from Crocodile and Sheer Force from Toro. So those are decent options. Redirection in the form of Butterfree. It's not the best, but it can do some can stuff. Ch Does Chansey get follow me? No. Okay, I wasn't. I couldn't remember. Yeah. Oh, that'd be nutty. Chansey got right? me. Oh, you would never. Well, unless it's a, a physical attack it's taking, then it's not going to like it yeah. very much. Yeah. But still, uh That'd be nasty EV light on. Yeah, you get Lightbird with Prankster shenanigans. Not that Lightbird is gonna, you know, survive very long. Oh yeah, li yep, Light Lightbird is good for sure. N not a very bulky cat. No, but it can do some things. It gets Prankster copycats always interesting. Certain sets, um, Thunder Wave, Yawn, Fake Out, uh, Snarl. So I get some good stuff. Yeah. All right, next we got the C tiers. Um, obviously this is diving a little bit deeper. Um, if you wanted to throw a Sun Team together, you could go Nine Tails. I mean, I wouldn't really recommend it, but. Or if you, you wanted to go, you know, like Hail, if you, for the team that whoever has um, a little Nine Tails, or they, if they, somebody wanted to grab a Bomb of Snow, they could grab a. Alolan Sand Slash with the Slush Rush. Yeah. Yeah. Alolan Sand Slash is pretty good. Um, I would want something like if I had Alolan Sand Slash on my team, I would want a Redirector so that I could get a Sword Stance off first and then bring the Hail in. Yeah. But it is something to think about. Kind of running through some stuff. If you didn't want to drop your A tier, but you still want to have Reggie Gigas fun, there is coughing. 
that would work. Couple different Rotom forms if you want to go that direction. Yeah, that's true. Ro Rotom fan's not a bad Dynamax option. I mean, anything that can have stab airstream is pretty good. Right. I mean, obviously we're in the C tier, so it's kind of like, yeah, you know, yeah, you can get a Hurtier if you don't want to go with Stoutland, but it's not going to be as good. Yeah, you can get Purloin if you don't want to go like hard. Yeah, Purloin with Eviolite still Car is not Caramon, the uh, Groudon team isn't bad. I know he has like a lot of sun support, but he also has a lot of stuff that just doesn't work with the sun. So, I mean, it's not bad to think about. Um, yep. Kiram's Flower Gift boosting your attack and defense just makes Groudon hit really hard and be, um, you know, really bulky. Hey, there's your friend Diggersby. Yeah, my friend, right? <laughs> Diggersby's not bad. Ground, ground normal is a pretty solid typing, I think. Um, With huge, have, huge like, power, uh, earthquake, support. choice yeah. band. Yeah, if you have like Tailwind support with something. Uh, or even Life Orb if you want it as a Dynamax option. Yeah, I'd probably be Dynamaxing it. Um, but again, like you got to cover that speed. Yeah. Difference. Otherwise, it's going to die very quickly. I like Jellicent too in the C tier. Jellicent's a good trick room. Um setter and uh get some really good attacks scald water spout so will-o-wisp it, it can do some different things i think i think it gets strength sap as well pretty sure so jellicent's a pretty good one you got auroras as another hail setter um not the best week to four times week to both fighting and steel Nobody wants the Dynamax wishy-washy. What about uh, the Gen 8s? Any, anything good in the Gen 8s? Not really. I thought about uh, Eldegoss, but I don't know. It's probably just too frail. Yeah. And yeah, Jellicent doesn't get strength set. Oh, it doesn't? What was I thinking that it got then? The only uh, move like of that, like that, is Absorb. And that's literally it. And that's a, a level one move. Oh, well. Thought it got that. I'll have to look something up. See why I thought that. Oh, uh, sorry. My bad. I didn't scroll down. It does, but... It's a breeding move, and the parent has to be a Drift Bloom that knows Strength Sap. Huh, I knew it. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, you were right. It's just, you know. Yeah, you, you just got to work for it, as all right. things do. So, cool. Any C tiers um, you're looking at, hint, hint? I mean, well, there's one that I had wanted. Alex but is pretty somebody solid. picked, But somebody picked it up ahead of time, and that was another sand setter and have pout on oh yeah yeah because it was on my list and then um our friend i think it was ali that grabbed yep. him and i'm like i'm not very happy with you <laughs> but you know what i grabbed articuno which is honestly not that bad for uh waco the rain team um i know he bounced back in week two but i think week one the electric attacks of Vero really uh, hindered him. So if he's looking for a cheap lightning rod user, there is Sea King. Oh yeah. C tier. Um, he could go pin Kirchen up top, but I, I would probably go with Sea King, honestly. Yeah, I'm gonna help him out because he wanted um, an ability patch for one of his Pokemon because he wanted its hidden ability. So I'm gonna send them that at some point nice because i'm like i got one i was like i got one remaining 
And then ironically, I got an ability patch the day after I told him I had one left from a surprise trade from a hacked Pokemon. So I'm like, hey, huh. I'll take it. I'll, yeah, I'm like, hey, I'll take well. a free ability patch. Yeah, so that is our review on free agents, free agency. Cole, are are you planning on making a lot of changes or do you think you just want to do a couple tweaks? Um, Right now I'm thinking maybe just like a couple tweaks. I do have an offer for one of my Pokemon. I don't know if I'll, if I'll take that up or if I'll drop that and let the person know that, hey, you know, I'm going to be dropping it. You might want to pick it up next week or whatever yeah so i don't know we'll see all right awesome well thanks as always cole for joining us thanks for having me oh yeah we'll catch you real soon all right all right socialize hope you understood all that stuff with the free agency you know transactions how that works so now i'm gonna go through every team and just do one pick, might be a little crazy, that I would make to each team for what I would do. So, starting with the Black City Zekrom, 2-0, maybe they don't want to change anything. But when I'm looking at this team, I'm seeing, you know, do I need two Dragon types? No. You know, which one's better? Como Haxorus? Probably Haxorus is honestly better. So I would drop Como. And I would pick up Rabombi. You can do um, some Pollen Puff stuff. Uh, it doesn't have a Fairy type. Pretty nice. A nice Pokemon to put the Focus Sash on. Speed Swap. I know that a lot of the Pokemon are already pretty fast. But Speed Swapping on to say a Bisharp or a Volcarona or a Metagross isn't a bad idea. So that's the change I would make for Black City. Moving on to Boston Braviaries. Looking at theirs, I mean, I would drop Raboot and probably pick up something like, I don't know, I, mean, I gotta stick with the Gen 8 team. So that's kind of tough. And I don't really want to give away what I want to do for realsies. So let's just say that we would do Rune Rigus. You know, gives Ghost and Ground very good typing three different immunities uh, gives us a little bit more trick room option you know can do some nice support things Rune Rigus for Boston the Buffalo Bidoofs currently 1-1 one one. Uh, I don't see I know that they're like okay we picked up Doug Trio, we picked up Ninjask for a couple of these guys to get like some beat up in there I'm not really sure about that and this is a little crazy but their team's really fragile maybe you gotta like kind of do a bunch more change than this but i would actually pick a morgrim it's a pretty easy um prankster screener that they can get so you can add a lot more bulk with those prankster screens and with fake out could help you with getting up those beat ups pretty easily or, you know, setting, setting up your Dynamax anyway. Alright. Up next, we got the Charm City Charizards. For them, now it's not all going to be C tiers that I'm doing here. Because here we're going to drop Urshifu. And we are going to pick up Whimsicott. Now, I like Whimsicott for a couple of reasons. One, he does have some Trick Room he can play with. But the rest of his Pokemon are pretty, you know... They're okay speed, but Prankster Tailwind's really good. And Whimsicott is one of the fastest beat-up users, which goes very nice with Cobalion. Also gets Helping Hand, Moonblast, some stuff like that. I think that would be really good for Charm City. Daytona. Daytona's another team that I think needs quite a bit. And I've already talked to him about this. But I'd be looking to get Blastoise over Politoed here. Blastoise can learn Aqua Jet as an egg move that would be able to proc your Colossal if you want to Dynamax that. Blastoise is also a pretty good Dynamax user. It can learn Helping Hand as well. Water Spout, pretty good. So, Fake Out 
So it can be support. You could do the Aqua Jet. Maybe like Aqua Jet, Scald, Fake Out, and Helping Hand. You know, could be something that a Blastoise could do as a support role. And it also gets Shell Smash, so you can do that. All right, Denver, we're going back to C tiers. I don't really see Needle Queen doing too much here. I would like to see Jellicent. Um, just a better Trick Room setter here. You could also do Executor if you want instead of the Needle Queen. I just think that Jellicent right now for lower tiers is one of the best Trick Room setters that we can get. And that would really help out Pokemon like Melmetal and Conkeldur and even Arcazole if you don't want to bring the Hail 1 game. The Diamond Desert Dwellers. Oh, Chris. Alright, so. A Bomb of Snow is a big waste of a B tier pick on this Sun Team. And we kind of talked about this when going through all the Pokemon, but Lilligant would be huge. It can learn Sleep Powder. It can get after you. Um, that would in the sun that would really help Groudon get off those precipice blades a lot earlier or have a Charizard late game be able to outspeed and do some stuff there. Cole in the Driftvale City Grapples. He's got this hail thing going on. So I actually like I'm almost thinking of getting rid of Articuno but I can see it's um, potential a little bit. Heck yeah, you know what I'm saying? We're, we're going a little, little off the rails here. This is a little crazy, but I, I would like to get Herdier. I think um, as a C tier in Sand, it'll outspeed quite a bit. You can get Thunder Wave, you can get After You. That could help like Gigalith if he wants to try and do a Gigalith sweep or help with Heat Ran coming in late game to get off some big eruptions without being outsped. You can also get Thunder Wave. You know, pretty good stuff from Herdier. Just a good support Pokemon. El Paso with Electros. They're a surprise 2-0 team, and I'm sure they want to keep it going. You know, they got this Sun thing going on a little bit, but not really. I don't know if you would want to, like, kind of move into that a little more. But they got this Cresselia, which they haven't really used too much. And Cresselia Togekiss is very good for getting up. Um, like Trick Room. You could even do something like an Eject Button Togekiss and Cresselia. You know, follow me, Eject Button, Togekiss switches out, Cresselia sets up Trick Room, and you got something like Torkoal that can benefit from it. Marowak isn't bad in Trick Room, but I would like another Trick Room user, and also just like a Pokemon that's pretty good overall, Crawdon. This gets two typings that doesn't have Water and Dark, which are both very good typings. Uh, Swords Dance paired with Togekiss, and it can also get Aqua Jet, so that can be pretty good. Water is a great all-around typing, as we all know. Next up, Lavender Town Gengar is one of the underperforming teams here. So, I'm looking at this Buzzwool. Not seeing too much I want to do with it. And I'm looking at Sceptile, as I kind of talked about. I want something that can proc the Unburden. So I would like to see a Frostlass as a support with Ice Shard. Something like Ice Shard, Destiny Bond, Ally Switch, Will-O-Wisp maybe. Um, Max Inceptile and then Ice Sharding into it to proc a weakness policy would be very big. Frostlass being a ghost type can't be faked out. So that would be pretty good there. For the Memphis Muse, I want a Selgor. And I think the best thing to drop for a Selgor is the Articuno. That way you have the Palosan combo, which really I, I wouldn't be running Palosan with, without the combo, really. And that's the reason for that. Mighty Psyducks. So for them, the switch I would do would be to drop Rapidash. Actually, no, not Rapidash. Which one am I dropping here? Oh, it's Verizion. I want to drop Verizion. I actually want to get Pinkurchin. And this isn't for the electric terrain. It's actually for Lightning Rod. 
I want a lightning rod user um, just to kind of go with Lapras here. Just, you know, protect Lapras a little bit more. Probably not the best move. You know, Clefable can kind of do something like that as well. But Pincurchin could do some stuff. Oklahoma. My idea is either Shenotic or Spiritomb. I don't really see. Probably Shenotic. It shares a lot of weaknesses with other Pokemon on there. I want another Pokemon that we can Dynamax that would be able to hit through Steel and Rock types that Porygon Z really can't hit through. And the best one in the C tier is Machamp. So that's what I would do there. Machamp also combos relatively nicely with, you know, Faramosa just giving it more attack boosts. PSG, so PSG is stuck having to use Gen 2. So for them, I would drop Blossom. I don't mind Sneasel, but I would be dropping Blossom, and I would pick up Noctowl. It's another Pokemon that's actually not bad as a Dynamax. You can also Weakness Policy Ice Shard with Sneasel, and that could be pretty strong as well. So gives it like another typing that it doesn't really have with Stab Normal. Doesn't have a lot of resist. Tinted Lens, it can't even really be resisted. Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh's got a very solid team here. The one I would think of is getting rid of Mianxiao and adding a after like a follow me user. And I think the best one for them is Tangrowth. That way it still takes advantage of the psychic terrain. Um, you know, being immune to priority. I think Rage Power there could be real nice. That could really allow Calyrex to get off a couple more hits and protect um, whatever you decide to Dynamax. Probably be like the Lele or the Neo Lego here. Seattle Shiny Sylveons, they need a lot of stuff, but I think one of the things I would want to do is drop this Magnezone or the Rhyperior. Maybe the Rhyperior. Rhyperior just has too many shared typings with everything else. Okay, we're going to drop the Rhyperior, and we're going to get Stoutland to pair with Tyranitar. Um, I think Dragapult Tyranitar is a fine combo, but Stoutland is the better Herdier, and we already kind of talked about that for Sand. Um, so yeah, it would do the same thing with Tyranitar, being able to do after you, as well as some support there. Slateport Sableyes, they need a lot of work. We're going into the C tier. We're looking for something that can Dynamax, and I want something too that can pair relatively well with the Pelipper. So we're looking at Polyrath or Armaldo. I think we would go with Polyrath as its weaknesses are covered by a lot of the other Pokemon here. And you can maybe do some tricky stuff with say belly drum um you'd probably want like sableye polyrath fake something out belly drum it's gonna be a little tough he doesn't have a redirection user you could like ally switch i guess but it's not guaranteed tokyo tokyo kind of in the same idea we want to get rid of some bulk and add some offense and we're going up to the a tier here and we're gonna drop Umbreon and pick up Spectrier. I think that would be huge. You already have a bunch of dark and fairy types to uh, kind of dissuade other dark and ghost types that want to attack into you. So having Spectrier as just a really fast, hard hitting ghost would be very nice. The Vera Beach Volcarona. So for them, I look at Aerodactyl and Noiver and I see them as. You know, two of the same coin, but Aerodactyl is just faster. Like, you're going to want to use that as like a fast rock slider or a fast tailwinder. So we want to drop Noivern. And I don't mind keeping the Dragon Typing. But I want to get Guzzlord just for a lot more bulk. You see this team really doesn't have a lot of bulk. So having Guzzlord, other than being hit by, say, a Fairy-type attack, the HP stat on Guzzlord is huge. It can take advantage of Oranguru setting up Trick Room. And it's a dark type, which helps it with dark and ghost resist. As you see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
two, three, four, five Pokemon weak to dark, four of them weak to ghost. So having a big bulky dark type on there will definitely help. And last but not least, the Waco Scissors. I would be dropping Seismitoad and I would be looking at getting Butterfree. It's another Pokemon that if you're not doing something with your rain, because sometimes you, you won't want to bring rain, it can be a support. Uh, Rage Powder, of course, Hurricane, 100% accuracy in the rain, Sleep Powder. So, Pollen Puff to heal some of your Dynamaxes if they're not getting like one hit KO'd. So, that would I, that's what I would do for each team. Let me know in the comments if you think there's a Pokemon that you would look for to add or drop on a certain team. And as always, thanks for watching Socialites. Stay tuned for more Global Pokemon Society Draft League. And let me know if there's any Pokemon news that I missed this week, because it didn't seem like there was a lot. And as always, stay classy, society.